huge solar panels in the middle of the countryside in Cantabria. Thessabea once thought he was close to realising a dream, sustaining a decent lifestyle while producing his own electricity. This is my solar park. It was supposed to be my source of energy, but it's been the source of all my troubles. In 2007, Thessa spent 1 million euros on six solar panels. At the time, the socialist government encouraged citizens to invest in solar energy, promising subsidies for investments and a supposedly guaranteed purchase price for the energy produced. My investment was supposed to have been paid off in 15 years' time, after which I was supposed to start making profits. I really thought it would be a good way to earn money, to pay my son's studies if he wanted to study abroad. But three years later, the horizon darkened. Investors attracted to the long hours of sunshine in Spain began to flock in. The result? Electricity production capacity was nine times higher than predicted. Incapable of delivering the payment, the government cut off the promised subsidies. We got a message from the government telling us they were going to stop paying us, that they were going to exclude us from the bonus system. You can't imagine the prime minister of your country bankrupting you. The solar project was the whole family's dream. This photo shows Dad with Jose. That was the very start. The panels had only just been put up. The family had pooled all their savings into the solar park. When the subsidies were cut off, they were no longer able to pay back their loan and even came close to losing the family home. Realizing that you could lose a 200-year-old home overnight was very difficult. <laughs> The economic aspect of it was bad enough, but the personal humiliation was worse. If you get treated like a criminal, that affects your health. To obtain a solution, Thessa began demonstrating outside the Spanish parliament six months ago. Every day from 8 until 2 p.m., he stands here to demand justice. Hi there. So, the fight continues. Either they find us a solution or they'll have to carry me out of here in an ambulance. I'm not moving. I've got nothing to lose. Two years ago, Thessa thought he'd won. After two hunger strikes and several sit-in protests, the government of Pedro Sánchez promised to help. But nothing has materialized. The Socialist Party sent me a letter promising to help me and all the other families in the same situation. But it was a pack of lies. Thessa's case is one of the most dramatic in Spain. But other families also feel cheated. There are 62,000 in total, and 5,000 belong to this association. Like Thessa, these people also believe they were helping their country by pivoting to solar energy. Spain back then was under pressure to meet EU goals on the ecological transition. In 2007, the government told citizens to invest, but they haven't kept any of their promises except for paying us back for the installations. A lack of planning, bad calculations. These families say the regulations were insufficient and the state improvised. The government kept telling us, keep going. They could have said, listen, 100 investors is enough, or let's stop here. What we're asking for is compensation for the damage they caused us. Out of the 30 and 50 percent they cut, we want at least 20 or 25 percent. No socialist deputy agreed to talk to France 24 about the situation. The Conservatives, who also cut back on the subsidies, are tabling an amendment that could be a lifeline for these families. The goal of this amendment is to allow the families who built those installations to receive the bonuses that they were promised. An amount this deputy hopes to draw from the future National Fund for Durable Electricity, a new way of financing renewable energy. We're proposing that this amendment modifies the law to allow small voltaic producers to be compensated through the money in this fund. So far, the date of the vote in Parliament remains uncertain, as does the result.